Welcome everybody to a Polaris ship review. I am your host, Tars. I'm gonna rate each part of the ship. Let's dive in. For those who are new, this is a capital class killing machine. This is the first military ship that players can use. I'm going to start with the exterior. I give it a nine out of 10. They nail the RSI look while combining a military feel. Next, we have the main elevator on the starboard side. The main elevator comes out through a hatch similar to a Hercules and Corsair and maybe others. As you can see, the platform is really big. I wouldn't be surprised you could fit over eight players. I wish they added an option where you can keep the rails open since it's a military ship. I rate it seven out of 10. Next, we have the bridge and the cargo bay. We're going to the cargo bay to check out the size 10 torpedo operation station. The top operation station is separate from the pilot seat. Chris is like, did you think I give you pilot controls? <laughs> As you can see, the console is straightforward very easy to use get into a remote turret you got a lot of great visibility all around i give it nine out of ten the camera is located in the front of the ship it's a little camera let me zoom in next we have the cargo bay there's so much room in here you could do cargo running fill it up with vehicles you could have a fight club and a dance off. I like the fact that they put cargo bay doors on both sides of the ship and the ramp. My only gripe is if you aren't out of space, I wish you had the option where you just can open the doors without the ramp deploying. I give the cargo area eight out of 10. Very ergonomical, double the productivity. Now we're leaving the cargo area of the ship and now entering the engineering section. The engineering section is incredibly immersive and it's very easy to navigate around. There's a ton and tons of details in here. There's relays, there's tons of components, cooling systems, and it, what it looks like, like an engine, moving parts, pistons. Nikola Tesla approved. The engineering section is located mostly in the back bottom of the ship. I rate the engineering section 9 out of 10. Next, we're headed to the hangar. The hangar area has lots of room, even Chewbacca could work comfortably. The hangar is located above the engineering section. There's lots of space in the hangar. The doors open relatively quick in case you have to get out in the battle. You can fit lots of snub fighters, small fighters, and all the way up to a Drake Vulture. Additionally, the hangar has a door on each wall, making it easy to access different parts of the ship. There are lifts located here and here that take you down to the cargo bay or back up to the hangar. This wraps up the hangar. I rate it 9 out of 10. Next, we're headed to the medical bay. The medical bay is located hangar area port side. The medical bay, I was very disappointed with it. it doesn't have a medical feel at all. It's very dark, dingy, very bland. What really pushed up the score of this one was the four medical beds. I rate the medical bay six out of 10. Now here's a clip walking through in the Carrick. As we walk through in the medical area, it really does feel and the design and the brightness feels exactly what a medical facility looks like. Next up, we have the brig. It is a very nice jail, I have to say. Going through here, looking at the design, looking at the jail cells, it's like a Martha Stewart kind of like, you know, oh, hey, Martha Stewart, what did you do this time? Wait, where did she go? 
Anyways. But I really thought the design was excellent. 9 out of 10 is my score. Almost forgot to tell you. The brig is located starboard side hangar area. Next, we're going to the mess hall, which is located on the port side. Then, we're checking out the crew sleeping quarters, which is located on the starboard side. And both are located just above the cargo bay area. The mess hall. Oh, hey Martha. Oh, hi Mark. That's where you went. Anyways, the mess hall, very straightforward, 7 out of 10. We are now at the crew's sleeping quarters. We are now in the hallway, where all the rooms are. As you can see, plenty to house all the crew in this ship. Let's check out one of the rooms, show you the decker. As you can see, very, very, very nice for crew on a military ship. It's not like the real life military ships they're, how can I say, not very comfortable and ugly looking. Captain Quarters and the Armory are relatively close to the main elevator on the upper floor. Armory on the port side, Captain Quarters on the starboard side. First, we're checking out the Armory. Here we are at the Armory. I give it an 8 out of 10. It's great space, a bench, plenty of lockers. When you're ready to suit up and get into battle, it's big enough the lockers you can actually get inside and change if you want. There's plenty of gun racks for your crew. The captain's quarters. Oh, it's locked. Oh, he must be getting busy. I mean, he's probably busy. The captain's quarters is likely not done. Hopefully it's done in the near future. Explaining this would be like reminding a pilot to fuel up before takeoff. Next, we have the bridge, which is obviously located in the front of the ship. Starting in the bridge, there it looks to be a mapping system of some kind. It's not working yet. And to the left and the right, in the bridge, these cabinets are housing components for the ship. As we head further into the bridge, as we can see, there's a lot of different components and chairs that do different functions. As you can see, the view is breathtaking. There is me and my companion, Norman, flying with a crew on the Polaris. Let's get an expert's reaction, none other than Captain Kirk. As you can see from his reaction, he was speechless. I give the bridge 10 out of 10. Last but not least, let's talk about the sheer firepower this ship has. 28 size 10 torpedoes, two forward facing missile racks, each holds eight size three missiles. One rear-facing remote turret. This turret holds 12 size 2 missiles. Two size 6 guns manned turrets. Four size 3 guns manned turrets. Four size 3 guns remote operated turrets. Last but not least, point defense cannons. And there's seven of them. Man, I don't know about you guys, but that's a whole lot of firepower. Whether you're playing defensively, offensively, or both, this ship will not disappoint. It lives up to its reputation as a capital class killer. I rate it 8 out of 10. That brings the overall score for the Polaris 8.18 out of 10. The ship's a real workhorse built tough for big battles and hard jobs in the vastness of space. Whether you're fighting off enemies or just hauling cargo, the Polaris gets the job done right. Buyer beware, the last listed price known to induce a heart attack was $750. Oh, we're not out of the rough waters yet. How long does it take to claim the Polaris? One hour and 15 minutes. And how much is it to expedite the Polaris? Almost 50,000 AUEC. Well, it's a good thing you're already at the hospital. It's time to bring this to a close. As much fun as I've been having, and I want to stay a little longer, I have to get going. Anyways, what are you guys are going to do with this Polaris? Are you going to do cargo missions? Are you going to be the enemy? Are you going to be the hero in the story here? Tell me in the comments below. Also, if I entertained, hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. I'm also on Twitch. Currently, I don't have a schedule, but I do live stream. Thanks for watching. See you in the verse.